Encouraging news for parents, new reports say that Pfizer could apply for emergency use authorization COVID vaccine for children as young as six months old as soon as today. For more on this, let's bring in ABC News contributor and chief innovation officer at Boston Children's Hospital, Dr. John Brownstein. So, Doc, Pfizer could ask the FDA for emergency use authorization as early as today. So, um, let's talk about a po yeah. I mean, possibly a six-month-old baby could get vaccinated. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Do you feel good about that? Yeah. Well, listen, I feel great about it because getting that, that group vaccinated is a key to getting out of this pandemic. And, you know, we are seeing, you know, early data. Likely it's going to be as safe as it was in older kids. We have to, of course, see the safety and efficacy data. But we could see shots in arms of those younger kids at the end of February. Um, and I think many parents across this country are anxious. There's 19 million kids under five. So that's a lot. And we know that this pandemic has shifted to the unvaccinated, and that includes our kids. We've had 11 million children test positive for this virus. And even last week, we had over 800,000 kids test positive. And so pediatric infections remain incredibly high. Getting these vaccines to our younger kids is so critical right now. So it's great to see some movement there. And, and Dr. Brownstein, there's a, a KFF survey out right now that asks parents of younger children, do they intend to get their children vaccinated? Only about a third of them said they do. Another third said they want to wait and see. Parents, you know, little ones, you know, they're, they're going to be concerned uh, naturally, I suppose. So this has taken longer to get this authorization. What do you say to parents of the little ones who are, you know, Boy, my, my, my baby, I just am not ready to do this. Well, how, do you, well, how do you talk to them? Well, listen, I, I get it. As we go younger into the age groups, there's more concern and hesitancy, right? I, absolutely, and I understand the risk in kids is lower than adults, but kids do deal with the severe consequences of infection, and so it's so important to get those kids vaccinated. And that's why these trials have taken so long. They want to make sure they're safe and effective. You know, the initial trials were two dose at three micrograms, so one-tenth the amount the adults got. They added this third shot to get to that immune protection that we're seeing in their older age group. So what we're going to see initially is a look at this two-shot regime, but it may ultimately be three shots. But, you know, we have to be concerned that, you know, we can't roll this out too quickly. We have to, you know, get parents on board. We've seen this with the 5 to 11. You know, we only see about a quarter of those kids eligible are getting the shot. It's going to be lower in the younger groups. Um, so it's very important for this, this process to play out. FDA needs to do the review of the data. That needs to be a vote. And then, of course, it goes to the CDC for recommendation. So it's still a lot of steps ahead before we see those vaccines available for our younger kids. So let's talk about stealth, this Omicron subvariant. Yeah. I mean, just the word in itself is a little nerve wracking. You know, we've been hearing a lot about it. Yeah. What do we know and how concerned should we be? How concerned are you? You know, I'm not that concerned right now. And I, I know the word stealth got conjured up as a sort of sneaky variant that's evading vaccines. It's not. It just means that it's a little bit harder to identify through genomic surveillance. And that's why it's the stealth variant. It's slightly different than the original Omicron, but that's about it. It's been actually in the U.S. since the beginning of November, and it's only about 1% of cases. It may have a growth advantage compared to the original Omicron, so it means that it can spread a little bit faster. But a lot more data needs to be accumulated. So I'm not worried from a public health perspective at an individual level. We have to let the science play out um, and do what we need to do, which is still get vaccinated and boosted uh, if you're eligible. Absolutely. Dr. John Brownstein, thank you so much. Always great advice. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.